Hello and welcome to episode 67 of the Daybotcast. This is a weekly podcast where the three of us come together each week to discuss K-pop and whatever's current in the industry. As always, I'm joined by Nate. I'm a special baby. Thanks, Victoria. That was from Monster X. From nice. Special. All right. <laughs> and oh, on the, in the other corner, we have Andrew, who usually has three things. Number one, Coachella was over, or Coachella Weekend One was over the weekend. And the most important, most influential artist of our lifetime performed at Coachella the Walmart Yodeling Card. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And no, like the Walmart yodeling kid, like went in front of like a big ass crowd of like drunken high people at Coachella and like lit the stage up. It was insane. And also, like apparently Justin Bieber was a big fan of him and like just went over and said, "Oh, you're really good and everything." So, yeah, it was that's pretty wholesome. Yeah, nice. that, that's actually that, that, it's actually a really really, really quick, like cool story or whatever. Like he's going around, like he went to Grand Old Opry. He's going around like like touring now. So yeah, good. good. Big ups to that kid. Yeah, good job. Um, number two of oh, four. I'm, I'm having four. Yeezy season is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. Well, one, Kanye West is back on Twitter, and two, he announced that he's dropping two albums in June. One is a solo album, and, then, and the, the other one is a uh, a duo album with him and Kid Cudi. So it's like it's 2010 all over again. Kanye West and Kid Cudi are made, making music, so this is like a dream come true for me. Um... And number three, uh, a non-K-pop recommendation. Listen to Kali Uchis' new album. Really good. Really good. It's kind of like the revival of Amy Winehouse and sort of like funk, like old school type of music. So yeah, it, it, excellent, excellent. And just a bonus number four. Kind of a sad thing, but uh, just wanted to uh, re- remember the uh, or acknowledge the passing of uh, WWE legend and Hall of Famer Bruno San Martino. Uh, this dude, like, he was a legend, like, back in, like, like the 60s and the 70s. Like, he's He holds the title or the record for the longest, like, title reign. He held the title for 2,803 days. That's seven and a half years. Wow. Yeah, and just, a, like, a th- small, like, fun fact, but, uh, yeah, Bruno Mars, actually, his his stage name he picked, uh, or his dad uh, said he looked like Bruno San Martino, so that's why he picked the name Bruno Mars. So yeah, it's just sort of like a hmm. tying it back into music. And yeah, he's he was a legend of his time, and yeah, it's really sad to see him pass, but yeah, he was, he was great. All right. So from here, we can get on to our first Wait, topic. Who, who no are you? Blow no. who, who I are you? am Jacob. No blow no. It's fine. You guys don't care about me anyways. Never Let's go. No. How dare you? you have, uh, there are Jacob stands somewhere out there. If you're a Jacob stand, write like 69 in the comments or something like that. All right. Let's go. <laughs> write 69 if you're a Jacob stand. All right. Anyways, from here, we can go on to our uh, first topic. Um, so, Consense uh, KCON is coming upon us. Very consents, soon. Consents, K-pop, con stuff. You said consents. Consents. Oh, whatever consents. that means. <laughs> Anyways, uh, since uh, K-Con is coming upon us very quickly, uh, we are getting you know some artist announcements and whatnot. We decided we'd do sort of our uh, K-Con artist predictions, so I guess we're going to do that. Uh, though, I think by next week, all our, all, they're going to like announce more, aren't they? Or is that going to be like... Over the course, I guess. They've only announced, what, like th- five, five so far? Yes. Yeah, five. So that's probably like half the lineup, so we have a lot more yeah. to go. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, we're going to sort of like, uh, I guess, I uh, guess the, um, you know, remaining four or five artists that are yeah. probably going to be there. And we, so, could, do, we yeah. could do LAs, too, since we're probably mm-hmm. not going to cover that afterwards mm-hmm. in here. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, let's get on well, with the topic. You want me to go first? Yeah, okay well i got a really long list but i mean so the only ones i marked i only marked a couple for specifically for new york the rest of them i could see either mm. um the first one i'm guessing is aoa because they have a comeback soon and i could see that being a thing i don't know have they ever been to kcon aoa at all aoa came to kcon in 2015 same year as girls generation i believe kcon new okay. york mm. 
So yeah, it's been a really long time. I could yeah. see them coming to either of them if they have a comeback soon. Yeah, the, their comeback is what? In next they just month? announced it, so yeah, it's soon within a month probably. Um, I don't yeah, I don't remember exactly. Um, Golden Child's a pretty big, like, pretty big chance. I feel like, I like, I feel like Mnet tries to go for the bigger companies, and getting the rookie groups of the bigger companies try to get them more uh, exposure. Mm-hmm. Um. Next is already ruined with Stray Kids. I wanted Stray Kids to come. We should probably see which ones have been announced. I was gonna already say we point. should. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Okay, that so so far, yeah, so far uh, uh, that has been announced. Wanna one because duh, um, yeah, Wanna one was the first artist announced. Then last week we got or last week we had Hayes and Exid, Nate's favorite. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's our. Hey, two, I that's wanted two... to see them live. I Just paid money cream. to see them live. Just not, Just not creep. So yeah, but there's no way they they play they do that song. So yeah, one to one Hayes, EXID, and then just we're filming this on Thursday. A uh, Thursday, just like literally like an hour ago, they announced that both Stray Kids and NCT One Two Seven are coming to boo, uh, KCON. Boo NCT boo, and don't get me wrong, I love NCT, but we saw them last year. Yeah, we saw them last year. It was it's a weird it's a weird choice as to why only One Two Seven is going because I mean. Why not just yeah, bring? If it was like the whole. Was, why not just yeah, bring all these? Like, yeah, just bring 2018. Do black on black. Yeah, you can you do the whole get, thing. You like, can do all the songs. Yeah. Yeah, just have each subunit do one song, and then have ten do dream in a dream. Like that's a perfect stage right there. That yeah. I, I pay good money to see that stage live. No, no joke. Yeah, I was a little sad. Um, but it didn't matter because then right after that got announced, and I was sad. They said Stray Kids was coming. I was like, okay, whatever. I'll go no matter what. Cause I want to get hype. Hype. Listen, I uh, see some rap rock at KCON. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I'm gonna start a mosh um, <laughs> with a bunch of like how, how, girls. Like how hard do you You're think it would be to start a mosh? Everything. Is that uh, is that is, hard. that is that considered like is that considered minor abuse? You, if you would start, probably get kicked out. Is that is that considered like minor abuse if I start a mosh pit with 13 year? <laughs> yes. Uh, next, I have FT Island. I think since CM Blue was there last year, I could see FT Island coming um, to either of LA or New York. Um, it seems like they'd be they seem down for a band every time, hmm. um, and I could see Day Six or dead. FT Island. Yeah, because they've had Day they've Six had a... has already been there, and then CM Blue was last year. Yeah, so, so they've had FT a band Island every year. would be the next. It was either FT Island or N Flying. I feel like would be could show up. Um, any, uh, of the IOI branches, but that's mo- probably just me hoping. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. WJSM was at LA last year, so there's a good chance they show up. Um, especially because Monster X won't, so Starship, if they send someone, it's going to be Cosmic Girls. Um... But yeah, like Pristine, Wikimiki, Guggenon, I could see any of them showing up. Um, mm. For obvious reasons. Or just all of them should just show up, because that should be <laughs> the whole show. Like, Just have an IOI reunion show in yeah. Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will set, I will pay for everything. Screw buying a house. I will spend all my money to get an IOI reunion show personally for me. Um, <laughs> card... Card will probably show up because they were at LA last year, and they're gonna have a new song. Well, actually, are they gonna have a new song by then? Did, uh, probably. Yeah, no, but I thought June yeah. was June was their comeback, so that would be perfect. Well, did they say a date? I just know they said summer. So. Well, I mean, June is sort of, I guess, the beginning of summer, so close enough. Yeah, so it could be, yeah, but it could be like August. So I don't know, but Card will probably show up since they were at LA last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the boys is a good chance. They seem to be getting pretty popular. Um, and that would be a good slot for one of the newer groups. Um, kind of like K and K and SF nine were an up tension were there last year. Um, infinite. I, so like, I kind of base this, these groups off of like what was there last year and then who was in LA last year. So I feel like infinite would be a good spot for like the highlight slot. Um, as like the, the senior like, guy, yeah, group. the older group. 
Um, because Infinite had a great comeback at the beginning of the year. Um, so yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Um, and then a couple more. I feel like I might be just. T- am I just taking all? You're just your taking guys? everything. But don't saying. worry about. it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just listing everything. Um, I could see. I'm coming up so, with like an actual lineup. Oh, I see. I didn't come up with a lineup. I just listed like a yeah, bunch. Yeah, I'm just of listing. I was like, I could, I, I could see these being there. Uh, I could see So You being there. Although Hayes is already there as a soloist. Um, if they do another soloist, I could either be, I could see either So You or Sun Me. Uh, more likely Sun Me. With how big Gashina and uh, what was the other one? I always forget the name of the other one. Jacob. The new song. What's the other what? one? Again? The other song. Oh, uh, newer song. Olivia Hie? No, no. Sunmi. Sunmi. Oh, Sunmi. You're Sun-Me's not song. paying attention oh, at all. What the hell did you come up with, attention. Olivia <laughs> I thought you were talking about... I was writing down Luna for something. Oh. <laughs> said- no. No, yeah. I couldn't remember Sunmi's like, no, newer gonna song. I was like, no, they're going to do debut stuff. Yeah, heroin. Um, the drug. Uh, and then last but not least... Sorry, I was like, I'm like God. editing my lineup. That's why oh, I'm yeah. like... <laughs> last but not least, for the love of God, please bring Bulbagon. I want to see Bobo gone live. But aren't they, isn't isn't Ji Young on academic yeah, oh, probation? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Ji Young's like no, you know, on academic we probation. She, she's gonna fail. She's, she's gonna, gonna fail yeah. if she keeps speaking. That's true. So they probably won't come off. But yeah. that would be. I wish. I would be happy if they show up because I want to see them live. Oh well, that's All my right. list. It was a lot of people. I feel like I stole everything. All but right. then you guys didn't have much discussion with me, so I was no, no, no. So I, I was have, confused. I have some. I have some that you. I'm surprised. That you didn't say Momo Land. Momo oh, Land yeah, is Momo, yeah, I, that's true. I have guaranteed. That for my New York one. There is yeah, Momo no Land. way that Momo Land doesn't show up to K. I don't think they're coming to KCON on New was, York. I was gonna say they'll probably be LA. I don't. It's think It's gonna be, be LA. Like again, I was talking about it like before, but it's a perfect storm of uber popular song. They are closing in on a hundred million views already on Boom Boom, and it's we were not even halfway through the year. They have multiple English speakers, and it's like it were, they they need a girl group, like a new sort of new girl group that kind of needs the exposure. So Momo Land's kind of like a, a slam dunk. I'm like locking that in in pen. Dreamcatcher. I don't think I I don't think Dreamcatcher will come on. Unfortunately, maybe even for LA, like I don't think they they will like. They have to. They didn't do North America on their stupid world tour. <sighs> I don't know, like, I don't know if... If, if, if Dreamcatcher's gonna be there, that's gonna be hype as hell. I mean, if oh Dreamcatcher's there, yeah, I'm 100% going to LA, that is it is, but... I, no, like, if, they're, if, if, they, if they came to New York, that'd be amazing. Yeah, th- th- that would be, but I, I, I don't think they're coming to New York, let alone LA. My next, um, my next prediction would be Elris. I feel like they're sort of an option as well for girl groups. Not New York, yeah. probably LA. It seems my, like... So, like, just for discussion on that, I feel like they don't bring unknown girl groups because they don't bring enough girl groups. So, yeah. like, the girl group slots, I feel like, are gonna more likely to be at least, like, Goo Goo Don level popularity. Maybe. And I don't think Elris is there yet. <laughs> but my next one is, again, it's still is an volcano. outside shot. Love is Volcano, yeah, but... Still crossing my fingers that we get Luna. I know Rob's definitely crossing his fingers that Luna comes, come uh, comes to America someday. But who knows? Because again, you like I, you said, they're probably going to be doing debut stuff. Because the, yeah, the OT twelve is going to be around. That's why I scribbled them out, and that's why I was like had Luna on my mind. <laughs> yep. We were like, hey, what was the last song called? And I was yeah. like, huh. <laughs> I had I had Stray Kids on my list, but obviously that's already confirmed. The next was on yep. my list was Icon slash Winner. I think one of them is going to come to. I forget. Did 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 Winner come to L.A. last year? I forget. Like I don't I feel know. Like, uh, yeah, I, on, I still. I, the I feel like one. Of, I feel like one of them are gonna be there. Like Winner. No, they again, weren't. No YG last year. I feel like except well, for except for we, Zion, we got uh, we got Zion T. But yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, Zion T. That's right. He kind of doesn't count though because he does. His yeah, own thing. exactly. He's, a, he's black label. Yeah. No, I think he's under like YG proper, not black label. Surprisingly. No, he's black label. Okay, uh, Teddy's. At least okay. that's, I think, I'm pretty sure he was, like, the only one on there. Thank yeah, God. he's, like, their only artist. Thank God, because we, we actually, yeah, if it is, thank God, we don't, we don't need him under YG's clutches. But I feel like with, Icon had a really popular comeback, and uh, recently. Yeah, Zion T is literally the only one on Black Label right now. <laughs> Can just move everyone from, if, if High Ground is closing down, move everyone from High Ground to Black Label. Let's be completely <laughs> fine with that. But, 
yeah, again, Icon had a really popular comeback recently, and obviously Winner had the song of the summer in Really Really, so... Uh, again, that feels like kind of a no-brainer. But again, it's, it's up to YG if he actually wants to make money or not. Um, my other other choices would be CLC. Yep. Yeah, I had them for uh, LA though. Yeah, CLC is probably uh, like, a, like almost a shoe in for LA because they again they they want a popular girl group with somewhat like has hype and obviously with Black Dress they they have a hype song again. So again, that's that's that, that, that's an easy call. We we've already mentioned Wuju Sonyo. My outside shot for either one, Yoko. I know. I know. Yep, Jacob. I, I put that down as well. <laughs> but yeah. I, I had them. Like, I had them as like a, this artist or this artist for a certain slot. Like I don't for like, like the sort of like indie slot. Like I don't indie know. R and B slot. I don't know if Yoko has enough like international reach to justify being at at, at KCON. But I mean, they performed. They performed at Mama. So I mean, like. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, like it feels like it feels like Tomboy just got them really crazy popular with international fans. So, so I it could happen. It could happen. Who knows? Uh, that's the only. I think that's the I only mean, band. I have the videos the got pretty good views on YouTube. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah. It's, it's 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 they're an older crowd, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, so yeah, with the the IOI group or IOI or anyone related to produce, I have. Wiki Mickey, I have Chunga, I have Samuel. Though I think Samuel is probably going to be... I know he grew up on the West Coast, or California, or LA. So he's probably going to be... He's he's almost a shoe in for KCON LA, I feel like. Because, mm-hmm. again, just another uh, English speaker goes to every KCON for whatever reason. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, because I mean, like, I guess because like, they... Uh, well, at least Mnet's doing him a favor after they sort of shanked him out of the after they after they screwed him out of top eleven in one one. So why not? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like you mentioned, the boys, Gugu Don. So yeah, that's that's pretty much my list. I think, I think yeah, we've. I don't think there's gonna be any like complete surprises when it comes to the KCON like uh, uh, uh lineup. Really, like I don't think we're gonna. Yeah. I don't think anyone that we don't mention is gonna show up on here. Yeah, I don't think like. SNSD is going to show up for something crazy. If SNSD shows up to LA, you're all coming. <laughs> okay, so... Alright, so first I'm going to do, uh, like, I guess the uh, related... Um, not related. Remaining uh, artists. Note before you remaining, start, Jacob. Okay. I could see Tiffany showing up in LA. If she has an album out by then... If I Tiffany, oh, I thought Tiffany, you meant like behind me. I was like, yeah, she's no, always no. there. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. If, if Tiffany, sh- I could see Tiffany Shaw up on LA if she had an album by then. And, and I could see her. I, and if she does her cover of "Remember Me," that'd be that'd be worth the admission ticket alone because that was amazing. Okay, sorry for interrupting you, Jacob. But not all to right, so our, our ultimate bias. So I've got my uh, so the remaining ones for New York. Uh, so for the first slot, I was thinking like the more like indie or like R and B slot. So like what Zion T filled last time. Yeah. Uh, and who did you have before Andrew? There was like you had Dynamic Duo, and then wasn't there somebody else as well who was a little unknown? Twenty fifth, twenty sixteen was like, God, it was uh. It was Ailey, Dynamic Duo, and Crush. Um, oh, okay, Ailey. Yeah, all right. Ailey. Uh, then again, she's more like uh, Hayes' spot. But anyways, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, so I said uh, Hyako or Bulpagon for that slot. I could see either of them coming, to be honest with you. Um, and then I said Momoland, Card, and then uh, for like sort of like the, I guess like a hip-hop act or something, I said Zico. And oh then, my god! Yo, if Zico, Zico, Zico is ridiculous live. Yeah, like if you see any yeah. of his live like stages, he's insane. I would I would pay ungodly amounts of money to see Zico live. And then uh, another one, I guess we can hope Monster X. Yeah, I doubt it, but but they, then they, aren't they just like coming right before? Yeah, they're doing yeah, a no, world no, they're, tour, they're going like, the mo- they're going the month after. Like they're going like little, yeah, like two in, weeks afterwards. In July. Yeah. Oh yeah. Never mind. World that's never tour. happening. That's so not yeah, happening. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> but I, w- I'd be fine seeing them again. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so LA is gonna be one on one because I think they're gonna be the group that goes to both, in my opinion. Uh, also, because Mnet. But I don't know. Um, and yeah. then uh, Taeyeon, Mamamoo, Card, Day Six, Epic High, Twice, Red Velvet. Because <laughs> fuck me, right? <laughs> none of those, none of those things are happening except maybe you, Card. You, you, to, uh, no, this is at LA. This is at LA. Oh. Your list was oh, realistic, just, and then you're okay, just like, you're, screw yeah. it. 
Well, no, he's saying. No, I, he's I, saying have a, I have a real, I have a real yeah. LA one though. He's saying LA right, so is all the artists he wants to see because he won't yeah. be able to go. I don't think Red yeah. Velvet shows um, up to either one. No, I, no, because no, yeah, Joey's no. well, too busy. On top of well, Joey being too busy, I think they, I think they just didn't. I just, I think they'll plan out a better tour was, for them well, next yeah. year. I was going to say. This, I think this, the Chicago fan meet is a precursor might be to a tour. The water. Yeah, like it, just like, like they, they, they know. They know that it, they're gonna they're gonna make so much money off of like uh, a Red Velvet World Tour, so they're yeah. probably gonna want to do it right. Yeah. Oh, a friend of mine who's a huge fan of Shiny went to the fan meet in Chicago. That was pretty cool. Um, anyways, I'm going to the um, Red, meet so Red Velvet my, fan meet. What? I'm going to the Red Velvet fan meet. I know. Unless I do horrible or do really really jealous. good at magic. So you're hoping that you suck at magic, basically. I 100 percent am, but I'm not gonna throw <laughs> it for my teammates because it's a yeah. team-based event. He sucks uh, okay. at magic. <laughs> Look, magic. <laughs> Anyways, um, so one on one was a legit uh, prediction. So uh, one that I'd say is probably pristine. Um, I think they could, or like Nate said, probably any of the IOI branches. So pristine or Google Don, I'd put in there, like sort Pristi- of. Uh, Pristine's probably the most Before. likely because I feel like they're yeah. the most popular of the. Yeah, yeah, they the definitely groups. are in my opinion. Yeah, well, the problem um, is they haven't put out anything in a while, so if if yeah. they continue with that, they won't be. I feel like Gugudon, like Ujusonia is probably the most popular at this point because they've yeah. regularly released stuff since That's they true. debuted. Pristine, yeah. it's been what eight months now. Mm. If it, so, oh, or with Gugudon, like if I see. If I see, like, I, I don't know if I might die if I see the ears in person. Not even joking. I might <laughs> die. Like, I mean, at ears. You might have to go on without me, guys. <laughs> Andrew will be pulled out on a structure because he fainted. No, if Gugudon <laughs> has the high touch, I'm leaving the line for that. Like, not even joking. I'm leaving the line for that. All right. Anyways, uh, for you my can't third touch pick. Your ears. No, I'm not going to touch <laughs> the ears. God damn it. Like, hey, can I touch the ears instead? <laughs> You'll like, get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, my third pick would be uh, Pentagon. I think they'd probably be a good cho- choice like a for the call, group. Actually. Pentagon um, or CLC, I, I think, are, again, with, like I mentioned before, yeah. that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, probably CLC's a shoe. a good catch, too, yeah. Yeah, that's so, true. Um, so, yeah, I put uh, Pentagon, also CLC, actually. And then uh, Chang'e, because, again, but, fuck me, they're going to they're gonna get the somebody that I really, really want. <laughs> they're going to uh-huh. have somebody I really want. I know it's going to yeah. happen. <laughs> Real question is CLC wearing black dresses. Nope, the nope. They're no. gonna be all. They're gonna well, be wearing even Eugene. They're gonna be wearing suits. No, they're gonna even be wearing. Eugene? No, my prediction. My prediction is they will pull a. They will pull a AOA in KCON twenty fifteen or whatever, where they will dress up in outfits that look reminiscent to the New Jersey Devils because when KCON was in Anaheim last or uh, a while back, AOA. Had outfits that look like uh, Anaheim Ducks outfits, so mm. that's, that's my cool. prediction. All right, um, so I said Chunga uh, Crush. I could see him being one of the solo artists, probably. Um, I said Day Six because again, like Jay is from LA, so I couldn't see, really see why not. And they didn't go to they didn't go to LA last year, did they? Or actually, no, I no, they didn't. I don't think uh, so. Brian Brian's also from LA, so they just did their yeah. tour. Or sorry, Young yeah. K. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, G Friend, I think they could because uh, they're having a comeback soon, so I could see them going to LA instead of New York. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, since again we got NCT again, I could see Seventeen doing it again. And then uh, last one is uh, Eric Nam. Yeah, he's, Eric Nam. Well, you're he's right. doing a concert. Isn't he doing a concert? Yeah, tour? he's doing he's doing his own concert tour because he just he doesn't want to be. He doesn't like being beholden to the powers. And besides, he's... I know, he is under CJ, I believe. I forget. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I still I could know. see him being at KCON regardless, to be honest. So, yeah. Those are my predictions. And it's going to end up being my gag my gag uh, prediction just because I said it. <laughs> yeah, I think I I don't think we're going to see, like, Red Development or Ghost Generation or... You know, you know what's an outside chance that I think could happen? Because remember, we got last year... IOI um, reunion? Uh, uh, you, you cut out, what did you, you say? You cut out, what did you say? I said IOI reunion. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> you, have to fix your, you have to fix your peak, whatever, I don't know. Say it slowly. IOI reunion? It's not. I, no, 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 IOI reunion. Because last year, they had, we got Super Junior D&E for, uh, for KCON LA. 
I would not be surprised if he, if if the newly minted or the newly christened DJ Hyo makes an appearance at KCON LA. I would not be surprised at all. You know what she should do? What? She should do a sweet live remix of Taeyeon and Wiz Khalifa. See you again. <laughs> No, 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 no. She should, what she should do is she should perform. He should be the DJ. Oh, no. He should be the DJ for whenever Tiffany comes out. And then it's like, oh, yeah. my God, it's a reunion. <laughs> yeah, and then and then she can play the, the hair commercial SM Station song for Yuri. My so secret. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pipe dreams, though. Anyway. Okay. Was that it? Yep. Are we good? Yep, those yep. are our predictions. You're cutting so. it out a lot, Jacob. Topic two. Topic two, we're going to review uh, XOCBX's new mini album, which is pretty much a full album. <laughs> seven, near, yeah, seven it's, songs. It's, it's, it's that yeah, weird like, middle. What, what middle. exactly is like the like? What is the no yeah the threshold? Uh, there, I've seen and, mini albums that are eight songs, and I've seen full albums that are eight songs. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. So anyways, okay. it is called Blooming Day. Yep, it's XO Blooming Days. Yes. Um, and quick, the first song or a oh, quick thingy whoa. before we go into whoa. the end. what? Whoa, what? God, <laughs> nothing. I'm just quick before usually we Usually, there's no quick before. Before we go in, I just want to give a shout out to how amazing their the CBX logo and the album cover art is. Because the CBX logo that they have is it's basically it's a cube, but it's sort of subtly spells out C, B, and X in the three sides that are being shown. So it's a mm-hmm. I love like the sort of visual design that they did for the whole this whole like album and comeback. So anyway, yeah, they to- uh, had that last time as well. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, first song is Monday Blues, and this is a sweet chill electronic song. Um, I really like how minimalistic it is, and it's a good vocal showcase. It's a good, it's a good slow paced tempo song. Obviously, it's like Monday blues, so it's got to be like the the tempo and the sort of like theming of the song is sort of, kind of follows the the title of it. And there there seems to they they seem to have an obsession with days of the week or some type of day because Monday blues, blooming day, Thursday play date, like there's something like everything is involving some type of like day or whatever i don't know but yeah i didn't think about that yeah it's pretty cool i love i, I kind of like that theming that they have for the entire album jacob <laughs> uh yeah so i thought this was uh actually a really good way to start out the album because uh like i was expecting it to be kind of hype like hey mama was but uh most of the songs sort of like follow this like chill route so uh yeah i, I liked it it was a nice slow groove and uh sort of you know more r&b so yeah i liked it i liked it a lot Next is Blooming Day, the title, or the single, also the title track. Uh, this is more of their funky pop song, that similar to what they did before, which is, like, very funky. Um, so I actually didn't have much to comment about the song. I liked it, but it didn't, like, blow me away or anything. I feel like Hey Mama, like, blew me away. Um, yeah. This song was, the song was, I liked a lot, but it was kind of more of the same, so it didn't... It wasn't anything crazy, uh, but I did really like the colorful, minimalistic music video, mm-hmm. um, and the choreo was really good too. I actually, I did. It kind of grew on me actually over the past week or so. I did, I thought it was okay when I first listened to it, but I've really come to love it because, like, basically, I just realized that this is EXO CBX is basically just EXO just trying to like do shiny esque like yeah R&D just like type funk song. based yeah yeah stuff. which is amazing because again like the they have the vocals to sort of do uh, a very like R and B funky type of group um, the beat is insanely catchy like everything about this song is so catchy the only my only complaint would probably be that I feel like the the chorus not just not not, not like the lyrical content over like can I be your boyfriend is well, besides it being like kind of corny or whatever, it just doesn't roll off the tongue as fluidly as you'd kind of like it. Yeah. Kind of like, can I be your boyfriend? Can I? It's it kind of they kind of rush through yeah. it, so it kind of feels weird. It's kind of at odds with like how like chill the song is, but still, I love the production on it. Like, it's I was shocked that this wasn't like London Noise or whatever. It's because it's it's kind of right down their alley, but it it was other producers. If anything, it kind of sounds similar to. It's kind of like a male version of uh, Luna's uh, "Free Somebody" in a way. It's kind of kind of got the same beats going mm. to it. So yeah, 
a really well done song and obviously the the vocals are insanely good because it's it's the three like best vocalists out of exo so mm-hmm. so uh for me yeah i i i sort of had like sort of in the middle i guess like i i like i liked it on first listen a lot but i it also didn't really blow me away like i still think like if i compare it to hey mama i guess i definitely like the uh the last song better but mm. yeah, I, I, de- I definitely like it a lot. But um, I guess I wish I wish the uh, the chorus was a little stronger. But that's it. It's like only a small minor grape. So yeah, it was a good song. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree. Um, next is "Sweet Dreams" with an exclamation mark. So this the is cover just like, of the Evan Y song. Yeah, co- yes, cover a cover of the Evan Y song. Um. This has just like awesome 80s synth instrumentals. Um, and at the beginning, it's all like glitchy and weird and awesome. And this is definitely my favorite song. Yeah, like and- with Sweet Dreams, I or just EXO CBX in general, I love that basically it's EXO kind of doing a more f- fun concept than, or the members of EXO doing a more fun concept than they normally could do in like regular EXO because I feel like uh, almost all the EXO title tracks are like oh we gotta be uber serious uber sexy that sort of thing and this is yeah again with it goes it, it's sort of a lighter type of mood so yeah it's I love that they sort of like get to like feed into this uh type of sound and obviously yeah this is definitely a great example of it with all the synths and obviously I, I love anything that's 80s type of sound so yeah this this song definitely resonated with me immediately yeah, so uh, immediately for me, again, I I really really like the uh, the synthy um, uh, sort of like instrumentals. They they add like really good like texture to the track, I guess. Mm-hmm. So uh, also the um, like they're not like spectacular or anything like that, but I I really really like the vocals in this song. I think they they just fit really well, I guess. Wait, anyway, because again with because you usually exo harmonies kind of or are are crazy when it comes to nine people but i think they're still yeah they're still able to pull it off when it comes to just like ju- just them three because they, they just have really good singing voices so yeah they get to showcase it more than they normally would be able to yeah, yeah. definitely yep uh next is thursday it's so a cover is- it's a cover of the day of the week <laughs> yes it's a cover of thor's day thor's day the norse god of the Avenger. <laughs> um, so this is like <laughs> so weird. This is loungy electronic pop song is how I described it. It basically reminds me of something that would be in Persona. It's very Persona like. Also, there's crazy, crazy falsetto in it. Basically, with with Thursday, I was just like when I was first listening to this, I was like, why did this sound like a like a male Red Velvet song? And then I look yeah. at the producer. I was just like, "Oh, it's Andreas Oberg. No wonder." Basically, he he does he does he's worked on a lot of Red Velvet songs. So I was just like, "Yeah, no surprise. Great. It's basically it's basically like XOCBX's Velvet track, if that sort of makes any sense. It's got the same. It's got similar sort of um, like electric keys, soft vocals. Like mm-hmm. again, I this probably was my second favorite song out of. Uh, out of all of the, or just right behind um, Blooming Day, like this one was excellent. Again, with the vocals and everything, just flows so well. Yeah, I I actually agree with the uh, the comparison to Red Velvet. I could totally see them doing a song like this. Um, I really like the, uh, uh, I guess how Nate said like the loungy nature of it, but it's still being like electronic. Like it's it's in that experimental area that I like to see in SM artists like. Uh, Red Velvet sort of took the mantle from FX, um, mm-hmm. like that sort of thing. Usually, usually uh, EXO is like SM's like mainstream sort of format group, like like Super Junior and Shiny, like that sort of thing. So yeah, I I I like this a lot. I think this was actually one of my favorite songs in the albums as well. It's funny how EXO became that though, because. When EXO debuted, they were the experimental group because mm. you heard like if you listen to everything pre EXO, oh yeah, like, like it was Mama, nothing like, like that. Yeah, but well, then yeah, if you look, Mama's yeah, but but if you look at everything post like EXO when it comes to SM, it feels like yeah, everyone they're they're trying to bring that experimental sound and all like again. NCT is literally like NCT is literally just like EXO but like dialed up to a thousand when it comes to the experimental sort of 
uh, aspect yep. of it, and even Red Velvet, yeah. So yeah, yeah it, it's mm-hmm. cool to see that influence that they've had on the rest of the SM uh, lineup. Yep. Yep. Uh, next is Vroom Vroom, which makes me think of Monster X, but <laughs> that's because I was listening to them in the car today. Um, so this is like a mix of like electronica and funk. It's similar. I mean, it's what C- XOCBX does, and but it also has more like eighties sounding synths. Like I like as it. A, as what I would have liked it more if they kind of stuck with the eighties synth sound, but mm-hmm. yeah, like it's the chorus, not like yeah, the chorus, there. yeah, it, it goes, it goes into like I feel like the the trap kind of like not really ruined it, but it just kind of felt like too much like a. a, a of like a, something out of left field, whereas if I felt like if it kept with a more consistent sound, I would have liked it. Like again, like I do like elements of the song. Like they, there's more. You're getting three like main vocalists of or of EXO doing like sing rapping or rapping or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, again, it's, it shows off like the versatility that they have in their voices and everything that they wouldn't normally get to show. So yeah, again, it, I like that part of it. But yeah, I, I kind of would have adjusted the. I would have fixed how they did the the instrument instruments in the chorus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, the, I actually like the song the most. Probably, I, I like the the instrumentals. I like how it's. It, I think it might be just because it stood out the most out of uh, everything. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it, it sort of like stood on its own versus a lot of the other stuff. Kind of uh, you know progresses into each other. Um, but yeah, I I like this a lot. I think um, I think I probably actually would have chose this for the title track over Blooming Day personally. But mm. I don't know. Okay. I can see. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh next is Playdate. So this <laughs> is like more traditional, like innocent sounding Geiger pop. Um, but it's still got some a little bit of funk influences. Um but I like the older sound. Did you hate it, Andrew? No, I, I, I hate how much I like this song because oh, it's so goddamn corny. Yeah, it's I hate the, how it's corny the it is. Angel song and fly to the sky or to the sky Woo-hoo. of XOCBX. It's so and corny. You like it? It's but it, great. No, but but yeah, because like the product again, it, it's got it. They have an all star team working on it. It's freaking Kenzie on the lyrics and again on Andre yep. uh, Andreas yeah. Oberk on uh, on production or as part of the production team as well. So yeah, it's such a well produced corny song. Which I should, again, I, should, I should hate. I I wanted to hate this song, but it's so it's too goddamn catchy, and the vocals are incredible. And even though mm-hmm. like, even though like a bunch of like twenty something year old guys saying I want to take you on a play date is kind of weird <laughs> 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 when you really I think mean, about it. With a, uh, I don't know, with these like corny sort of songs, if you do get a good production on them, like they're really, really, really good. Like, like my favorite example of this uh, for boy groups that is, is like uh, Got Seven's A. Like that song is, is yeah. way too good. Like it's yep. it's super super catchy, but at the same time, it's super like stereotypical boy band song. It's like, it's it's that kind of comparison, I guess, as what I would make. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Anything else? Nope. I like okay. the song a lot, though. So yeah, I I always find it weird to describe things because I'm oh, not yeah, like yeah, musically inclined. <laughs> yeah. So same. I end up just saying, yeah, I like the song. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, no lie though. Finally, I, I'd go on a play. Like I know like about so. audio, but I don't know about music. I guess genres is what and it stuff, is. Yeah. 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 So you. well, that's okay because this next song, my description is going to be ridiculous, but I think it's apt. So the last song is lazy. And I described it as ballad pop funk, because <laughs> that's what it, it's like. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I that's really, what it is. It's it, like a funky pop song that also sounds like a ballad. Well, yeah, it's it's definitely, again, a bit more laid back than the the middle songs in the in. Yeah, yeah. In the album, but yeah, no, this this one was all right, I guess. it's I guess it's a bit too yeah laid back for my taste. Um, mm-hmm. Again, they're doing a lot more of like the sing, sing rapping sort of thing, which is cool. So it'd be interesting, it'd be interesting to see what kind of direction they could take this in with the regular group if they could give, if they if they could get if they could sort of like mix up the the sort of like line or vocal distributions like like this because yeah, it's pretty cool to see it. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, 
It was between. It was probably between this and Vroom Vroom. It's my favorite. Like these days, I've been liking a lot more like laid back music because I have to like study and do work all the time. So I need something that. Are you the one that like, keeps distract me? Are you the one that keeps putting up lo-fi hip hop beats on our freaking YouTube channel? <laughs> Is that how you keep? No, that's popping? because uh, not not on purpose. My friend sends them to me, and I open them when I'm logged in. Oh, like our 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 feed is just filled with nothing but lo-fi hip hop beats. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't mind, but I'm just like yeah. That's yeah, no, no, no. my friend will, my friend will send me something, and then I'll be like, okay, I'll listen to it, and then yeah, <laughs> and then it auto plays into like an hour mix, and I'm like, oh, that's not the same song. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of it blends together, but it is good for studying with. Anyways, uh, yeah, I like this a lot. I it's chill, it's nice, and uh, yeah. Also, I found out recently, it's a little bit unrelated, The Apple Music does this, like, chill mix every week, so I just listen to that, and it gives me, like, chill K-pop. Mm, nice. <laughs> so, See, yeah. I just, I just curate my own in my, yeah, various, yeah. in my various lists that are titled. I mean, I typically do, but this gives me, like, new songs <laughs> I, I've never heard well, before. So. See, I want to do what you're doing. Andrew, but I have so much music, and actually well, no, yeah. figuring out what he, which one, is, what each song's genre is, and putting it in a playlist would take me forever. Well, no, basically, I'm doing it by mood. So if I were to take this album by example, like I your put, as fuck playlist. Yeah, I have. I've, 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 my as fuck playlists have sort of sounded just like got... you said your ass fuck. <laughs> no, no, no. I was no, like, no. whoa, that's a special uh, insert, playlist. <laughs> <laughs> insert. Uh, it's like insert genre here as fuck, but it's kind of gotten out of mm-hmm. hand because basically I have like thirty different like mood. <laughs> basically, this I have also like, reminds me. Oh, keep going. Yeah, so basically I'd put like, I don't know, I'd put like Thursday into like the, the smoothest fuck playlist or Blooming Day would go into the sexiest fuck playlist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, getting, it's getting way out of hand. It takes way too long. Yeah. That reminds me, I need to remove our clean tag from iTunes. Uh, yeah, yeah. We definitely aren't clean. <laughs> and we haven't been for a long time. It's all right. The still users, marked. users won't rat on us. We're it's bad fine. boys. It's fine. I'm sorry. But I do want to fix that, because I do feel bad. Um, For all them children's. Yes, exactly. You'll get, like, a parent who puts on a random K-pop playlist. Yeah. To find this and specific video about ass fuck playlist. The, playlist. I will backtrace you, and you have been times. reported to the cyber police. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway, let's give this a review. Moon. Score. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, overall, I did... A five, a two, and a one. <laughs> you're, because you're, the Nate special. My yeah, my special. Because yeah, so like I Nate, stop I, stealing my review scores. I want to, right. uh, like I I think I could give it a three for for uh, concept concept, but then it it is not, it doesn't feel like a nine to me. So then I'd have to knock a point off of. I guess I could I could use what Jacob intended the bias point to be, and remove my bias point and do five and three, um, because yep. that's kind of what Jacob. That's okay, what yeah. I designed it okay. to be. And now it's just gonna, yeah. three point. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> do that because yeah, it's an eight. Um, it's not a nine, and I think it's a five for music and a three for concept. So I guess mm. I'll just remove the bias point, which yeah, they would get a bias, a bias point. Be, I didn't even call it bias point because K-pop term, but literally yeah. just because your own personal bias. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it's it's an eight for me, and I'll do I'll do five three zero. All right. I'm that giving... might be the first time I've n- n- not given a bias point to. No, an you L- didn't give a you didn't give a bias point to Hyako. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're right. Or, so, or, or shame or on off you. on off, I believe as well. I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, um, I don't know. yeah, I'm going with a five two one. Like with this, it's it's good. It's good, but I I'd like to see what or what they do in their next album in terms of direction when it comes to XSCBX because I feel like they're kind of like getting to the sort of the end of or they're they're kind of like reaching their limits with what they can do with this sound. So it'd be interesting to see how they could sort of. I like the. I like the idea that they're sort of like going towards like a more like a funkier like sort of like basically like opposite of EXO where it's where it's more like electronic or like hard hip hop sort of thing. So I like that. I, I like I love to see what they can do in the sort of R and B genre. But maybe like what crazy crazy suggestion. I think they could. It'd be. I'd probably this would probably be one of like the few instances where I would not mind if they led with a ballad track or like some type of like R and B ballad sort of thing because they have the vocal. They have the vocal talent for mm. it. 
Um, yeah, they definitely yeah, have Shen yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah, again, it's it's sort of it's something that they don't really cover in EXO like Prime, like EXO proper. So yeah, I'd, I'd I'd love to see that just sort of sort of keep with the same feel, but sort of mix up the sound in a way. So yeah, five music concept, two out of three. Again, love the logo, love the visual elements of it. It's so cool how like they sort of like make everything like yeah like they play around with like really vibrant colors and that sort of thing it kind of reminds me yep. of Zhong Yun's uh, visuals in a way and yeah one out of one for bias point because obviously I'm gonna stand anything anything that says XO on it so 8 out of 10 for me yeah so so for me um, I gave it the same thing uh, 5 to 1 uh, so for the music Actually, for every single aspect about this album, really, is like everything is really, really solid, but uh, but nothing really like blew me away. Like, holy crap, ten out of ten song. Like, everything was like consistently pretty much like eight out of ten. I'd I'd probably say. Um, so I gave it a five out of six for uh for music, and then uh, uh concept the the music video was pretty standard. So I kind of just gave that two two out of three. Um, it wasn't bad or anything like that. I mean, they got the SM like production value behind it anyway so nothing's gonna be one out of three mm. unless it's like absolutely like I mean, horrible it's a, yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't like on location sort of thing i mean it was basically it was essentially yeah. an sm box but it, it's a, it's yeah, a fancy yeah. sm box yeah it was, yeah, yeah it was exactly. well well designed sm boxes yep and then uh yeah i just gave it a they gave them the bias point because it's definitely an eight not a seven so yeah yep Going going so. back to the uh, KCON thing, I would not be su- I wouldn't be surprised if Exo just ExoCBX came to uh, one yeah. of the things because I mean they uh, did that, they came, actually they I thought Japan. about putting them down actually yeah and uh, they did Super Junior D and E last year for LA yeah so I so could totally see SM's ExoCBX not down yeah. for sending subunits or like not against mm. sending subunits yeah and I mean yeah it's sort of it's an easier sort of thing to arrange as opposed to sending the entire group so yeah yep. yeah it's totally manageable I'd, so. I'd love to see ExoCBX yep. yep. So eight out of ten yeah, for 10 all three of everyone. us. So that's an easy, some easy math. No yep. shiny seal of approval, though. but the seal of approval. But not on the thumbnail. Not on the <laughs> thumbnail, though. No shiny. Um. <laughs> all right. So uh, topic, topic three? three, which is uh, weekly idol. The yep. weekly changes. idol and idol room. So yeah, this is my topic that I thought of. Basically, I just want to talk, so if you didn't know, if you're somehow under a rock and don't pay attention to anything K-pop, but listen to this show for some reason, um, Hyungdon and Defcon uh, had their last episode of Weekly Idol a few weeks ago, um, after doing it for like 350 episodes, like seven years or something. That's crazy. <laughs> um, and so they got new hosts and then they announced they're going to be doing a new show for JTBC. So first I want to talk about, I don't know. Did, did you guys watch the last episodes? Yeah, I was or able like to the watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the whole oh. thing. It was actually a no, really no, good no, episode. No, like the last, their oh, last episode. No, I, no, I, I didn't get to watch actually. the last okay. episode. So it was pretty disappointing to be honest. Cause, so like they had Monster yeah. X on and it was just a normal episode. And then at the end they're just like, it's our last yeah, episode. Goodbye. And they're like you'd think they'd like have some fanfare yeah. and like a clip, clip thing Maybe. of like moments from them or like something, but yeah, it was just really informal and like it really didn't give them what they deserved. Because then the next episode before they brought on the new hosts, they did a clip show, but it was a clip show of like the best idol moments. Like it wasn't Not even them. about them. <laughs> yeah, which, it was which like here are the best groups that did the two times dance, and here are the best groups that did. Part- this and that and it's just like it didn't even focus on them at all like they just didn't care about them part no, of me pretty thinks disappointed. that it might have been a messy breakup cause oh uh, probably cause I mean cause like the new show got announced yeah, so quickly okay so from what I've been able to like uh look up on the internet obviously uh I have, I have the article put up right here um they're bringing their PD from Weekly Idol over to oh, Idol really? Room so there's like okay. so yeah basically yeah, there's a know about that. yeah there's a mass exodus of there's a mass exodus People of like of their production them. talent. So yeah, that's probably okay. why. And I mean, yeah, leaving so, them, that must have been uh, NBC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah must have been their NBC cable being channel. Stupid. Yeah, yeah so oh, yeah, NBC is probably, they're probably they're, 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 yeah, they're probably pissed that they're leaving them for pay cable of, of all things. And I mean, it. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. So yeah, JTBC it, is like huge now because of knowing bros. Yeah, basically, it, it's crazy growing that like constantly. Yeah, if. 
if it wasn't for Knowing Bros, like GTBC wouldn't be in the position that they would have gotten Mix Nine for as garbage yeah. of a show Mix Nine was. It, it, you, YG probably wouldn't have ever thought about putting his show on yeah, uh, exactly. on K yeah. Cable if it wasn't for a, a big as big a show as Knowing Bro, uh, as Knowing Bros. But and also with this, yep. like yeah, they're they're starting to they're starting to like branch out their variety uh their variety offerings because yeah they they're, they're a known yep. they're a known channel now so it's it, it's interesting to see it's interesting to see if this happens more often or this might be this might start an exit not necessarily an exodus but this might start like um like a domino effect of like people maybe yeah. they be, might be leaving for pay cable cuz i'm sure like pay, i'm sure pay cable could sort of like I'm sure they can uh, pay uh, offer them a bit more money or something like that because it's it's not owned by they're not owned by like the government or whatever so obviously they can mm-hmm. it, it can be more competitive about it so it's it's interesting to see like what the sort of what the ramifications of uh, like this this handover in in terms of weekly idol uh, what what happens with like the rest of like for the variety space yeah 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 so yeah so they announced JTBC they're doing a new show called Idol Room. Um, which will report the latest news on idols, um, and also have guests. So it seems like it's going to be more like legit than Weekly Idol, but still have a lot of the similarities. Okay, um, so like some, more structured, basically. Yeah, so they're comparing it to JTBC's Newsroom, which is their normal newscast, except um, for idols. <laughs> but yeah, it will only feature idols as the main guests. That um, actually, I'd probably be into watching every week. Yeah, yeah, because that's actually so, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna do well because um, Weekly Idol is huge. Yeah, the, the, and, yep. and Je- Young Don and Defcon are really really big too. Yeah, it, um, it, what it seems like to me, uh, it, it almost seems like the whole like Top Gear Grand Tour. I sort was of about thing. to say oh, that yep. exact same. Yeah. So it's because yeah, exactly basically yeah, you is. don't follow the. You don't follow the show; you follow like the personalities the behind the yeah. show because they could do they could do something completely different, but you'll follow it for them. Because like if you yeah. watch, like honestly, I haven't I haven't watched. Granted, I haven't had too much time to watch uh, Grand Tour to be completely honest. But like from what I've seen, it was excellent. But like, yeah, it's, it's I don't really even, good. It's even better than Top Gear. Yeah, I don't even know who's on Top Gear. I think like freaking. Um, who played uh, Matt LeBlanc? Joey from Friends. Yeah, yeah Matt, Joey from Friends is a host of Top Gear now, which is insane. Yeah. And like some other guy, uh, like another British guy that was it's named Chris Evans, but not the Captain America one. But yeah, yeah I think he got kicked off because he was bad. But yeah, like yeah, it's sort of they sort of had like trouble. Like they're basically they're trying to recreate what made. Top Gear popular, but they don't have the same personality. So instead of like sort of making yep. it into their own thing, they're just trying to like they're, they're just trying to like do it with like different parts. But that being said, I don't th- like maybe kind of transitioning a bit too early. I don't think that I had that problem with watching the new Weekly Idol. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah I was gonna go to the next that I figured that we talked about their stuff. So yeah, the next part is just the current weekly idol or the new weekly idol. Yep. Uh, we all watched the first episode with the new hosts. So the new hosts are uh Isang Min. Yep. Um, Coincidentally also. Yeah, from also no, 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 no. <laughs> um, that's that, that that's that that's the greatest stroke of irony that they the the, the channel that the Donnie and Coney leave for is get they get they get somebody in return almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I'm blanking on the other two. Uh, I have it up. Yeah. Uh, up. Yu Seon and yeah, Ki- Kim Shin Young. Shin yeah. and Shin Young. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Uh, so yeah, like so Kim Shin Young's huge. She's like a huge MC comedian. She was. On, She's uh, funny. I, I never she saw was her on, before. Uh, what the hell is it called? The, the uh, Invincible like the, Youth. Invincible Youth. Yeah. And yeah, then, exactly. yeah that was she, amazing. And she was she um, was a part of that like uh, the parody like old school eighty disco song. I forget the name of it again. Mm-hmm. But. I she also, go. yeah, and I think the reason they brought her on and why she's going to be amazing is she's been hosting Show Champion since 2015. Wow. Um, so she knows all these idols. Like, she interacts with them on a weekly basis. She, yeah, no, she, she literally is weekly at the, uh, idol. She knows everyone. At, no, she displayed that in this episode. I don't know if yeah, you watched yeah, exactly. yeah, like her, like yeah, her well, knowledge. Yeah, I did watch it. Yeah. Her, like, she was, like, getting people by, like, their like their eyebrows or whatever. <laughs> okay, or, yep. like, to explain, like, they had idols hiding behind, like, a paper thing, and they, they're trying to guess who their idols were by, like, the, what they wrote on the paper There's or, like, their feet. It, yeah. yeah, and then, like, she was guessing, like, people, like, so easily so yeah you, she's yep. i feel like she's gonna be a gr- she's gonna be like the like 
like the, the yeah, main yeah. She'll, she'll be the main host um cuz yeah she knows everyone and she'll be cuz that's like that's the the reason like you know, none Defcon were so good that they've been doing. They did Weekly Idol for so long that they yep. knew everyone really well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and that's why it'll it'll look rough at the beginning, and I. Th- but I think they'll all grow into it. And mm-hmm. I think yep. yeah, sh- she's there to really help. Uh, I mean, I'm sure transition. if we go back, I'm sure if we go back to like the first episode. Oh yeah, their Idol is also well, really rough. If, yeah. If, if, the, if for the first, the format, like, yeah. The first like forever, they didn't even have idols. <laughs> So their, then what did they do so, on Weekly Idol? No, they like it was like a joke because they they would like they would just like put CG picture like fake just pictures like green screen oh, idols on so like, and like, like make jokes and stuff um for a oh while. My goodness. Um, <laughs> and then it's and then all of a sudden it just became an actual but idol. But then show. yeah, then Infinite showed up and yeah, and then it just then they just started getting people regularly. That's funny. <laughs> um but yeah, so so she'll be great. Uh, Sungmin, I think, will be good to be there as like the older, more like serious dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, yeah he's, he he was really funny because like he did not know anyone. Anybody, he's basically, yeah, exactly. he's, he's yeah. the butt of like everyone's jokes. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Which I mean is kind of is one you of need, the roles you need he plays. Like in, that in, in, in he's the one of the pe- roles he plays in Knowing Bros too, and he plays it well. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah, he'll be good because he'll be really knowledgeable of older stuff, and pr- yep. he's a producer, so he'll be able to mm-hmm. talk about that type of stuff. Um, so like, if groups produce their own music or whatever, he has mm. he definitely has that knowledge. Also, he knows all their CEOs. Um, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, he he, he, he says that too. He he's like, hey, I'll, that, I'll so. call your CEO. Yeah, if you don't, <laughs> you don't pick me, uh, I will not tell your CEOs that you're horrible. Is what he <laughs> said. Um, so yeah, and he's like really popular too, like yeah. nowadays because of Weekly Idol nine, nine bros. and a lot of. Uh, a lot of idols know him and kind of respect him because yep. of how big he was back in the day. Um, mm. And then you say Yoon is another really big. He's a uh, Saturday Night Live guy. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. He was. He's on Korean SNL. Um, but yeah, he's another really big uh, uh, show host and mm. a comedian. So I, I think he. I mean, he's big, but he's. I don't think he's Shin Young big. Um, but I think he's really well, like, known for being really funny. Yeah, I've, I, I've, I've, I've definitely seen him before. Yep. So, yeah. well, he, he, did, he did <laughs> Itaewon Freedom with JYP. Um. Uh, okay. So, yeah, like, he came up with that idea. Uh, you guys have heard that song, right? What? I, no. I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah. What'd you say, Andrew? You haven't heard it? No. <laughs> oh, it's like, it, it's, it, it was like 2010, and he made a like yeah, the, 80s the, the song. M- the MV is funny. It's like an 80s music video, and they have like big hair and everything. And the also song is like, just straight like 80s synth pop, and with but it's with JYP. So it's like kind of yep. like the Shindong, like the the station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, like it's very really similar. Like the wedding yeah. song yep. or whatever. Yeah, so basically yeah, like that. Yep. Yeah, but this was yeah, this was an original song that he made with like JYP, and made they made like straight up 80s song. That's great. And music That's video. amazing. It's really good. Yeah, he's really funny. He's really good at coming up with ideas like that. So, yeah. um, um, with Weekly Idol, uh, another comparison I feel like we can make um, with this situation of them leaving or like having a a cast change is uh, with Running Man because uh, we never actually yep. we never actually covered it last year, but Running Man. Um, they had a lineup change in which oh my they God. they got messy. I guess kind of messy, but yeah, they, they, Gary, the longtime like member or longtime cast member, ended up leaving Running Man. Even though yep. he was a guest the week after, I don't know, but yeah, he ended up leaving the cast. Of no, Man. yeah, he guested a couple times after. Yeah, so and at that point, like Running Man was like they were in the dumps. Like basically, they, Running Man was in danger of getting canceled at one point or another. Like, it, like well, no. They, no, it's not even because of that. They, they tried to kick out they, Kim Jong Un. Yeah, and, well, and uh, G. Yeah, they yeah. they basically announced season two where they would bring Kang Ho Dong, Kang Ho Dong, yeah. <laughs> onto the show, and they were kicking out Ji Hyo and Kim Jong Un. Um, and like, yeah, they like the they studio didn't announce that, yeah. this to anyone. Like, it was handled horribly. 
Um, which is kind of funny because then when Kim Jong Kook came on Knowing Bros, he was just like really acted really pissed off at Kongo Dong. He's like, <laughs> "You almost lost me my job." Like, <laughs> they had like a, they had beef going on, which was really funny. Um, but yeah, like, but then yeah, yeah the the studio just backtracked on it. Like they're like, "We're not doing season two. It's gonna keep going like it normally is. Like nothing's changing. We've worked yeah. it out with Jiho and Jong Kook. Like yeah. they're gonna stay on the show. Blah blah and, blah." And when. Because, or, okay. And in the aftermath, or in the aftermath of Gary leaving, like they, they decided. Like, well, they went just like a couple of episodes without adding new people, but they added. But yep. afterwards, they added. Oh God, what's her name again? I know one of them is Sechan. Uh, John, John So Man. John yeah. So Man, not the not from Card, yeah. and then the other one is Young Sechan. Who? Yeah. And in adding them, like basically, like Running Man's like viewer ratings are like higher than like basically what they were at like the height of Running Man now. So it's crazy to see. Are they really. Yeah, like, it, or maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but, like, basically, like, adding the new two new cast members basically, like, saved Running Man in a way, or, like, they're... They got it back up near to where it was, though. At least. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. so popular now. <laughs> like Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking, and they, at the beginning of last year, it was, like, between 5 and 7%. Yeah, now it's um, up at, like, And now nine. it's back up to, like, 9, 10. Yeah, yeah so that's um, pretty good. Yeah, Although re the past few weeks it's been going back down to like seven. Yeah, because um, I guess it's just been really I don't know. I mean, it or... goes up and down. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, just, and it's definitely not based on guests or whatever. But yeah, they've. Yeah, like, I feel you. like yeah, like the the new cast members, uh, young, especially freaking Soman, who's basically because again the the big like, even, yeah. I don't want to derail this into a, like a uh, a running man like thing, but basically yeah. Soman sort of basic meshed with like the original cast so well that basically everyone just mm. started. Or she's what she's easily my favorite, and I love the yeah. I love the. Uh, like the the ship that they have, basically, it's kind of like want, the yeah. Monday couple. I I, do I want a like, card to go on the show, and then yeah, and then so have so 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 on the yeah. <laughs> I do want to correct you, um, because like from when it started in 2010 to like 2015, the ratings were regularly like 15 to 20 percent, <laughs> which is why the show is so big. Like twenty percent of the people in Korea watch that show daily, yeah. like weekly. So yeah. it, 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 it's I, definitely on the K-pop, low end nowadays. Yeah, and I think Knowing Bros is a big part of that because it kind of became and it, like Infinity Challenge and Running Man have started to get stale because they've been going for so long, so a long. billion years. And yeah, Knowing Bros started two years ago and kind of picked some of that up. But yeah, they definitely. Um, I, I, but it's I guess, still big. Like, I, well, the point I wanted to make with all of this is that you'd be. I feel like replacing the cast or adding new cast members in like variety shows isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, because oh, yeah, yeah. sometimes it's sometimes it's a kick in the ass that like the the show might need. It's like, I feel, yeah, not yeah. that Weekly Idol ever needed a kick in the ass, but I feel like they, I feel like they could still do a really good job of like it's. But it's yeah. It's never gonna be the same Weekly Idol, I believe, as like what Donnie and Coney did, because like they have their own distinctive like comedy style, style. Yeah, and, yeah. But yeah, I, it's gonna I be still, different. Yeah, and I mean like, hey, with Running Man, like if you look at Running Man, when literally all they did was like rip name tags off, and then where as now like they, it's sort of more diverse. Like yeah, it's just I I feel like yeah, the new Weekly Idol will I think it'll be able to evolve and maybe just turn into something. Again, it's it's going to be different, but I don't think it'll end up suffering. Be for worse, it. yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. If anything, I feel like there there's going to be. Like, I mean, like me, like basically, I've barely watched any Running Man pre like pre like Soman and Sechong. Like literally, all I've watched was just like from this. Ah man, I know I'm missing out on amazing episode. Gary episodes. I know I'm missing I've, out on amazing episodes. But I literally watched every episode up to when like Gary left, and then I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I watched all the stuff you haven't. Yeah. So basically, I Which I think it, there might be people years. like me, except with Running Man or like, with with Weekly Idol that'll with Weekly, that, yeah, they'll, they'll pick up Weekly Idol with like once the once yeah. they start of sort yeah of start catching yeah. I mean, there's always gonna be new K-pop fans, and it's definitely for people that have followed k-pop for as long as we have it's gonna be jarring Mm -hmm. um because yeah they've been around since forever they've been around seven years which is as long as we've been into yeah as long as we've all been listening yeah Um, basically right i remember and i've watched shows yeah like not long after that i remember watching episodes um of groups i liked 
So yeah, it's gonna be jarring, but I think they'll do a good job. Uh, you just gotta give them a chance. And I, it's gonna I take personally a like bit. the new hosts. I think yeah. I think the show went smoothly, or more smooth than it could have. So, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, easily. Like like the game with the uh, where they had to find the card or whatever. Oh yeah. The <laughs> <instantly> <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Right yeah. One. Like, like the first yeah, one. Whoops. That's amazing. Yeah. Like I I don't think that was scripted at all. But in and like no, they have amazing chemistry wasn't. already. Like that's that's very yeah. hard to like figure out when it comes to like any type of like comedic or any type of sort of like live or uh like any type of like show like that or variety show in a way so yeah it's they have the chemistry done already so it's just all a matter of just like again with like the guests basically and i they're not gonna they're not gonna have any trouble getting guests on there i think no no yeah Yeah. i think i mean like like i said like they're they're fine nbc's got money it's not like they're okay they didn't cancel the show like They'll be able to get guests, and I think the new, the new uh, hosts will do really well, especially with Shin Young there, like guiding them since she knows everyone. Yeah. Um. Yep. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very optimistic about the future of, bo- of both shows. To be yeah. completely yeah, honest. I was gonna yeah, say like, I'm, I'm really excited for Idol Room too. Yeah, this is um, like, like you think it'd be like really like sort of crappy situation, but yeah, I feel like it's, it's, it's a win-win for us because we get, we get more go- like yeah, quality say, like uh, variety shows. So yeah, yep. Weekly Idol is gonna be different, but I think it's still gonna be good. And then we get a new, a new take on Weekly Idol, original Weekly Idol. I mean, yeah, um, I mean that, that's another one onto my list, like because right now all I really watch. Uh, occasionally is uh, uh, Running Man, Knowing Bros, um, Weekly Idol, and then uh, uh, Happy Together, and also, um, and then uh, now I guess I'll, uh, you know, add Idol Room to there, because that sounds actually really cool. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully they put it up with subs. They'll, I... They seem to be pretty good about putting the big JTBC shows up on ODK. So on ODK, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if... ODK sponsor yeah. us! <laughs> ODK, get more translators so you can translate more shows, please. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, again, this is a win-win for all of us. And, yeah, more more competition, more good shows, more chances for idols to, like, get shows that might not normally have been able to uh, go on these shows because it's booked up because they have like exo on five times or something like that or like yeah <laughs> like yeah. really big names yeah like i was I actually like... surprised that some of the smaller groups that they had on that episode yeah like they, had they, freaking... they did a good mix of old groups popular they, groups that have been around April. a while and new they, groups they, yeah, not, not yeah, like, yeah i was like what <laughs> yeah and like serum from fromis and yeah and then they had yeah nrg and like some really old groups yeah baby so... vox yeah, yeah I, 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 uh, that was that was actually really funny with the Baby Vox member. She couldn't yeah. remember any of her, her, her dancers. Oh, yeah, because yeah, like how old <laughs> is Baby like, Vox? Is no, like, like forty. Twenty. Yeah, I was gonna say. She, it's like, no, I'm saying no, like how old Twenty is years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so it's she's like, like forty. It's like H O T era. Yeah, that was H O T. That was that era. Was okay. Yeah, so H-O-T, yeah, it's, it's probably yeah, it's been Finkale. way too long. Yeah. Yeah, but 1997. Yeah, so the same year as S E S. But like, I do think yeah. It would be nice if they keep going, or if they invite like older artists like that. Which I, I don't think I don't think they ever really did with like uh, Donnie and Coney Weekly Idol. It was always like really like like bleeding edge, like everyone that was sort of like new. So it, it'd be nice for them to um, regularly um, invite. Yeah, older they started. Idols. They, yeah, they started doing that later. They had JYP on. They had uh, um, who else did they have? They definitely had. They started doing that more like often. There they had a. Uh, Blaking on her name. Uh, who came back recently and had been around for a million years, solo artist. Uh, she's really famous. Boa! Uh, no, not uh, Boa. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jungwa. Um, that's Jungwa, right. Yeah. She, was on, she was on an episode. So yeah, mm-hmm. they started getting older. And I mean, yeah, Boa was on there. Um, so yeah, they definitely started that. So I think they'll hopefully do that more too. Um, especially with like having... Uh, Songmin? Yeah, Lee Songmin on. All right, so I looked it up. Uh, Khan Miyoon was the uh, member of Baby yeah, yeah, yeah. Vox. She is 36, so yeah. Damn, like she, looks, she looks good for 36. Jeez. Yep. <laughs> Those Asian jeans. Yep, Asian <laughs> jeans. So, yeah. Okay, you want to move on? I mm-hmm. think yep. we... All right, so uh, this, this one should be a pretty quick topic. Uh, this is basically just came up because uh, recently I've been playing a lot of Street Fighter, and uh, this is yet, like, another sport where... Uh, Korea tends to be extremely good at is uh, fighting games so what I wanted to kind of was talk about was like 
basically what the reasons are for why Korea tends to be the best in the world at almost like any online game they play. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, so I was looking this up earlier at what, uh, other people had to say. And, uh, there's a a Reddit post where like a, uh, actual Korean post person was like, these are like their thoughts on like sort of the reasons why, um, he thinks that it's, it's probably like that. Uh, the first one that he lists is like, uh, is literally the fact that they have really, really good internet across the entire company. Or yeah, not company, country. 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 Yeah, like it's and ins- it's really, really cheap. Yeah, it's insane. Well, because again, we've often talked about how like South, South or South Korea is pretty small in comparison to like like mainland you know, or like U.S. mainland or whatever. So for yeah, them to like yeah. set up high speed internet is so much easier for them. And they, yep. they've had they basically had high, a high speed internet infrastructure since like. What, the 2000s maybe like way before yeah, we probably. ever did yeah like they, mm-hmm. their internet was ridiculously fast like even even when everyone was still on like i don't know like dsl or whatever yeah so uh like like uh, all right so yeah basically just just having that like i feel like it definitely could be a huge boost there because like uh you have you're much more encouraged to play online games like for example like where i live i'm from a very rural area so like uh my best friend like up at his house like he the only time he can play online games with me is if nobody else is on the internet because it's that (laughs) slow (laughs) oh no yeah because he lives like up in the hills so like there's like almost nothing he's all he's got is uh the ISP is called like Frontier, I think. It's so slow. Yeah, Frontier is you can't a, do anything. So like in Korea, like it's a if fitting you have, like, name for an ISP like that. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> like, we only calls, get internet everyone, to people out in the middle of nowhere for the Frontier. Yeah, no, everyone calls it shit tier because nobody shit likes tier. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so I mean, I think just having access to internet like allows for online games, like even going back to like StarCraft and stuff like that, and different like RTSs. Yeah, so, let's say I yeah. can't talk about fighting games, but I can talk about StarCraft and Overwatch. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, well, yeah, well, if you think about like, yeah, the, the internet infrastructure definitely is what gave rise to, um, like, just gaming as like a really, like serious hobby. And also, I feel like it's also because not, or I don't think console gaming ever really took off in um, Korea. Korea. No, same, I mean, yeah, yeah it's all to PC, the same ex- it's, to the same extent PC that like arcade. it did. Yeah, it's yeah. almost it's, it was almost always PC and arcade because yeah, they um like a lot of consoles like Wii U never got released in like friggin uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, Korea. most people don't even play games at home. Like it's they yeah. just go to PC Bongs cuz PC yeah. Bongs yep. have the 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 highest the best internet, tier yeah. computers and internet and then they don't have to buy their own computer. They can just spend tiny amounts of money to play all day. Yeah, like or no, Ten bucks for play an hour or whatever. Or no, like and, 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 with, with, like, with yeah, some games, bucks. with some it's, games yeah. like League of Legends, if you go to a PC bong and you you have yeah you get everything. Yeah, no, yeah, you you don't have to pay. You don't have to like unlock champions, and sometimes you get like a special IP boost mm-hmm. or whatever if you play at a PC bong that sort yep. of has a deal or whatever. So yeah, it's basically yeah, like it, it's it's really interesting to see how like it never really took off or it never really took off there or how the the Korean sort of like competitive gaming scene is very PC centric, whereas everywhere else it was yeah. up until recently or up until recently it was very just like console centric. Yeah, it was like Call of Duty and Halo and yeah, fighting at least games. in America. Yeah, in, all, in, in America games. at least. Yeah, it, yeah. But like, I guess sort of to talk about like fighting games, it's very interesting to see how like fighting games became prominent in Korea because again, um, with even with arcades, it mostly or up or up until recently the. FGC are like fighting games like Street Fighter, Tekken, were mostly dominated by either like somebody, people from America, or people Japan. from Europe, or Japan or whatever. So it was, I, I feel like it wasn't really, in, I feel like some, I'm showing the video of infiltration, like teaching the basic mechanics of Street Fighter on Korea Gaming. But yeah, I feel like it was infiltration that sort of like created mm. a, like sort of like opened up the land of opportunity when it came to Korean like fighting game professionals because yeah, if he, I feel like he helped put like Korea on the map when it came to uh, like Street Fighter and like all, all their fighting games as well because yeah, because yeah, like, yeah, fighting games um, are so popular in Korea now. I think apparently Street Fighter is still sort of an underdog in comparison to like, uh, I think, I think in Korea Tekken is the most uh, yeah. popular. Yeah, Tekken is uh, like, if you look at the last few Evos, uh, Evo, for those that don't know, Evolution Evo is a 
open it's an open video game tournament that's open to like open registration so that means you can get uh, for fighting games specifically so that means you can get like up to 2000 registrants for like street fighter you can get like professionals with people like me or whatever and like it, it's pretty crazy and you could but uh, yeah so let me look it up like evo 2017 results the i believe the top three the top three for tekken 7 were all korean like that's mm. how power like, like that, that that's how um like that's how crazy popular they're in the game and that might have something to do with the, like this might be going to like history, but um, the arcade sticks that they used in Korea are, or like the like these the actual American like, joysticks. Style. Yeah, they use American style, which had a circular, uh, which have a circular gate instead of the octagonal or the octagonal or the square gates that they use in Japan. Yep. So yeah, it's a lot easier to move, play three D fighting games with a, a circle gate as opposed to um, the like the other gates. So yeah, I, I feel it's like a that's diamond a, in Japan, like a square that's just yeah, rotated over. I don't, I, I don't use, I don't use uh, square gates because I don't play charge characters. <laughs> so yeah. side, side note, yeah, but I use an octagonal gate, but yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it, it, it's to the point where like basically Korea has like their own, like, I think this in general, like Korea is very much like their, like their self identity as Koreans is very important to them. And so yep. like winning yeah. the Korean way or like, like every, like right down to like the, every detail is so important, even when it comes to esports. So that like Korean players, they saw, Oh, infiltrations winning with this type of like fight stick. When, yep. Even though everyone's winning with Sanwa like parts or whatever, like they're mass producing a fight stick specifically for like Korean or people who like the Korean style or whatever. You yep. see, it, it's so interesting to see like, just like basically that Korean mentality again, which is, I feel like that's kind of like the answer to like their, our question as to why they, they're so good at all these like esports or whatever. I feel like it's just that, that mentality that they're able to put into like, even something like gaming where yep. they sort of like dedicate so much to it. Like so much, like all yeah. of this time and like effort and all that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. one of the other main reasons is that they're very, uh, I guess like nationalistic that uh, hmm. this guy was talking about. Like, you know, um, <laughs> like there was like the overwatch world cup, like basically, uh, like they're very populistic as well like they they tend to be very similar and stuff so they'll see like mm -hmm. oh this, this is a korean person you know and they're proud of that fact and they'll try to be yeah. like that person who's yeah they take so winning. much pride in that like the guy even mentions the fact that a lot of the players have basically like the same hairstyle <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he even goes that far which like, I, mean, I don't know yeah, if i agree yeah, right, with that part right now, but like Right now, I have a picture of Faker up, and like literally every every League of Legends player, I swear from Korea, I swear has the same like bowl cut with glasses, or with yep. glasses sort of look. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, on on top of that, like it's sort of the like the Korean worth at work ethic is sort of has into it is that they're like because they already have to do it for high school to get into a good school, they have to mm -hmm. basically just grind yeah. down, study all day every day. You yeah. know, they already know how to do that. So like to you know put it put sit down and then put all that work into a game that you enjoy like i feel like that's that's something that sort of can come natural to somebody who's from korea mm -hmm. and i feel like yeah i was go oh. yeah i was gonna say like based on what i know of at least starcraft, StarCraft like yeah. the reason they're so good is the dedication they put into it they live in team houses they yep. literally play 12 to 16 hours a day with breaks to eat, sleep, and work out to keep their stamina up. And that's, like, that's all they do. It's just, like, no... Most other countries, the, their esports athletes aren't putting that much time in and that much yeah. dedication. That They're not living in a house with their team. They're not spending every waking moment, like, working Although on a lot, a lot of them better. are now, I think, for Yeah, well, yeah, that's Overwatch. definitely picked up. Uh, well, yeah, for Overwatch League, because everyone has to live in... Yeah. In LA now, in LA, um, so they just have like team apartments or whatever, um, or like blocks of apartments. But yeah, it it just that's definitely picked up, and that that picked up in StarCraft, like when StarCraft Two was on, when I followed it, like yeah, a lot more uh, like the the uh, foreign teams like were going to Korea, Korea to, to play, play in GSL, so, and yeah. they yeah. they would they would follow that same like style of training to mm -hmm. keep up with them, um, yeah. Yeah, like it's it's another thing again with like uh, I'm not so sure about other games, but like in fighting games, like you literally need to just like real life fights, you need to train to fight somebody else, I guess. So like they're they're 
some of the people were willing to sit in the actual like training room mode and like practice the combos for practice, hours like, and stuff like that. Like, like over and over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you're literally like doing like drills and stuff to to get good. Like and whereas like most people they literally just like you know play games and stuff. So and yeah, yeah, I, I mean. I- it's I, I just find it incredible. Like I, I am somebody who sort of has like a short attention span, so I always get like bored really easy, really quickly in the training room. So like, I guess we'll see how that goes because I really need to learn how to like chain combos and stuff. I know, personally. like I, if I wanted to, at one point in my life, I was just like, I want to be a professional game game like person or whatever. I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't have the patience for that, and I, I tilt way too easily. So yeah, yeah, me no, too. Like, yeah, basically, yeah, it's it's a crazy like core ethic that they have when it comes to that sort of thing. It, 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 like not just with fighting games or whatever, but yeah, with, with like any like anything. Yeah, with, like, I mean in particular esports. mobas and mobas and uh, Overwatch uh, being the exception to su- shooters, I'd say. Yeah. yeah, like they're crazy, like dedicated to all all like these games and like yeah they, it's it's a point of pride almost to like that if a new like esports sort of like takes the forefront like that korea wants to be like the like the end all be all of it and then like that's yep. why like mm-hmm. even in games that they're not really good at like or they're not koreans aren't necessarily like known for being good at like like CS:GO or Dota, like yep. they're trying, like they're like they send teams to the international and to majors all the time, like just because, like, and they're they're getting better, like it's, it's crazy because like usually because these yeah. these games are dominated by other regions, but yeah, like there's the Koreans are still dedicated to it. it so I, I uh, think it also comes down to where like each person sort of feels like as if they're uh, you know re- sort of like representing their country mm-hmm. because they're sort of like a, uh, a like a top twenty nation, but they I think they still feel like they're uh, you know, back where they were, Behind. like, before yeah. the Korean War, like, very, like, yeah. you know, third world-ish, and, um, because, like, you know, there's still people alive who remember that, and I, th- I think, you know, they still feel like that they, they have more to show the world, so, like, mm-hmm. in whatever they do, they put in the work yeah. to, you know, yeah, show that Korea is great, and, you know, they have these great people there. And again, yeah, yeah. They, again, with the infrastructure, basically, Korea basically invented esports in a way where, like, before you could think of like conventional esports, they were doing like GSLs on the freaking beach or whatever, <laughs> like yeah, in front yeah. of like a hundred, in terms of yeah, thousands of thousands people. people. Yeah, like there's like they they sort of like their infrastructure for um, like competitive gaming has been around so long that it's not to the yeah. Whereas here in America, they it's still sort of like up until. I believe like 2012 I mean, it, or 2013 wasn't, wasn't really they, taken seriously until yeah, recently. it wasn't taken seriously and it wasn't until Riot Games the developer of League of Legends pushed to get like like athlete visas for all of the players that were like from Korea and China that were playing in North America so that they can like stay here long term so yeah it wasn't until like a couple of years ago that like the esports athletes could be like get special visas in in the United States which is insane so like where is in Korea like they're not gonna they're not gonna second guess you if you're saying like oh you play like professional games for like a living they're not gonna like look at you I mean they might look at you yeah. weird because like maybe like hey why aren't you a doctor or whatever <laughs> but like like it's 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 taken more seriously as a professional than it is really I think anywhere else like because I mean even yeah even places like Europe where they have like serious like Counter-Strike or whatever like they it's still sort of seen as like not a genuine like like not a genuine source of income because I mean really yeah you think I about mean it, I think it's I think it might be just similar to like here like people being uh professional athletes like like you tell someone like, "Hey, I'm a professional athlete." Like they might not believe you at first. <laughs> yeah. Like even if you look the part, like it's you'd like, be like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, I play for this team." It's you know? like, "Yeah, I'm 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 six four and I play for the Lakers or something like that." Not, yeah. not too many people are gonna believe you. Like but, if if they don't if they don't know like a lot about basketball or whatever sport you play, yeah. But yeah, it's it, it is, and that, that's why like Korea is basically like the model. And for like pretty much everywhere else, when it comes to esports, so not just when it comes to like the results or whatever, but like when it comes to like like strategies Resolve. or whatever, every like yeah, like like trying to play the Korean style is such a it's it, it's it's hard for a lot of Western like or a lot of people that aren't Korean to do it because like everyone just like like you go insane and like it's yeah. it's not perfect it's not perfect because like there's there are a lot of times when basically like they go insane because of I don't know like netizens or whatever like like they because yep. we've talked about like how crazy. 
insulting people are when it comes to uh, like anything with esports. Like if Faker messes up, it's like, oh, you're trash or whatever. Even though like Faker is literally yeah, the, the, be- he's, like, the like best in the god world. of League of Legends. Like they will, they're very relentless or whatever. And there's a lot of burnout when it comes to like esports or whatever. And like, yeah, that's why the, the average age of an esport athlete is probably. Or like any twenty in competitive gaming is probably like anywhere from like seventeen to like twenty three, and like yeah. pretty much like my age, I'm pushing it right now. If I if I ever wanted to go into competitive gaming, like it'd be probably be pushing it because again, there's so many people like my age that are so burnt out of just playing like all this sort of and it, it, ultimately it's it's not like you can't be in your I, I don't think you can be in your thirties or forties and still no, be no, like, I mean you even can, even at twenty three, your reaction speed is starting to get worse. Yeah, so like yeah. you're 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 just at a physical disadvantage even though it doesn't seem like it's much like it adds up when you're at that high level of a play yeah so i mean like yeah because you'd see like even even yeah, even in starcraft or whatever like you'd see like all of the older guard like the maybe like the the, the, the guys yeah. that are the guys that really like made their name in brood war like they're sort of they can't really keep up or Oh, when, yeah. when StarCraft 2 came out, they couldn't necessarily, not well, besides being a different game, but yeah, they couldn't necessarily keep up with, like, all these new people that are that started coming out of the woodwork. No, no, yeah, yeah, like, StarCraft, you, your skills transfer from StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, but yeah, Boxer couldn't keep up, and he was the best player in the world for mm. years in Brood War, but yeah, he was pushing, he was, like, 35 when, he, like, when that was happening, when StarCraft 2 was getting big. Yeah. yeah, he just, he couldn't keep up with everyone, all the... 17 year olds that were playing because they're just yeah they're just reaction speeds faster yep yeah but it, it, it'll it's interesting to see or to think of what the future is when it comes to like esport or not just, it, especially like fighting games in Korea or whatever to see if there's sort of like a Korean renaissance when it comes to this sort of like genre or whatever because yeah it's I, I feel like with Infiltration is doing well and I feel like he's sort of like nurturing that next I, I think generation. he has a lot of I think the FGC has a lot of potential because I think hasn't it been growing like a lot in the past yeah few years? it grew so much like like it feels like yeah again although like it's it's still small though because like like Street Fighter 5 I think only has about like a thousand to two thousand concurrent players at any given time but still like it, it's it's not tiny I guess but, but yeah, yeah it's I, I I definitely want to keep seeing it grow because I, w- I want to get on it as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, and another thing, another thing that sort of ties into like Korean identity and like sort of what makes them proud to like or what makes them want to like or attract to certain games is when games include Korean characters. Like you have Ari in League of Legends, yep. you have uh, yep. Diva in Overwatch, you have um, Jury in Street Fighter, like. Yep. They know they're mar- like the people that develop these games, even if they're like Western developers, like with Riot, or if they're Japanese developers, like with um, like with Capcom or um, uh, mm-hmm. Namco, like because yeah, like Horang in uh, in Tekken is also a Korean character. Like they they almost like like, like infiltration is no uh, is known or he if he has a chance to play Jerry, he will play it because like that's how that's how important the characters are to them. Like Faker is like his Ari is like legendary because again, it, it, it's so fitting or like they, they take pride in like they're doing well with like these cur- uh, characters that are inspired by either Korean culture or like they're like the representatives of Koreans and like all these sort of like various fantasy games or whatever. So yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's pretty interesting. Like even if it's not good, like even if it's like not meta, they will like for like, they will find a way to make any Korean character like good in the game like that's yeah, how dedicated like a, they are like i'm pretty sure jerry is like 40 or like 29th on the tier yeah, list jerry's trash 30. right now but so i mean i like mm-hmm. i like playing as her a lot personally because i like i like her dashes and stuff like that but again that's a little off topic but yeah um i guess that's pretty much what i wanted to uh talk about just because like i was uh watching a lot of like street fighter clips and uh infiltration kept showing up all the time so if yeah, I, if it I ever sort of reminded chance. me of that well i mean technically speaking i've seen infiltration but if i ever had a chance to talk to infiltration oh my god i'd be like teach me your ways like there's <laughs> like it's a, kind of a joke they call him infiltration opa for a reason like he's he's so like highly respected in like the of the the street fighter community and he's a pretty funny yeah. guy like i mean he like like after he won evil he was just like download complete because <laughs> he downloaded <laughs> his opponent but i mean he's a pretty chill dude so yeah he, he, he's definitely he's the best representative of korea in like the, the, the burgeoning fighting game community there yeah but yeah um so i guess that's uh basically all we have for the this week so uh thanks for tuning in and uh yeah 
Yep. Uh, do we have anything <laughs> up coming up? Oh, well, I mean, Nate, are you going to do anything for uh, uh, Red Velvet or? Yeah. Plus- um. I mean, I don't know if I'll film stuff to make a vlog. I'll probably put videos up on Twitter, like as mm-hmm. the concert's happening or right after. Um. But I don't know if I'll film like everything and make a vlog or anything. Yeah. Um, but I do want to unbox Marmello, uh, twice, and Stray Kids, so I'll eventually, hopefully, get around to doing those. And speaking of albums, uh, I guess we could just say it now, or for whatever, but congratulations to Victoria for actually, for winning the, uh, Andrew Audio Sucks, so here's a free album contest. She was the first person to successfully add up all of my review scores, even though I had robot audio, so I'll be sending her an album soon, and I we might end up running into her at KCON or Monster X or something like that, so that might happen. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Nice. All right, so thank you, and goodbye. Kanye. Adapt. It's robbingly <laughs> adapt. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like creamy. Adapt or die. <laughs> that's the that's the Street Fighter motto. Yep. It was supposed to be an entire yep. Will I Am produced twenty one album that never got released. I feel like everything that YG they touches in never America never sees the light of day. No, 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 no. Because like there was a clip of it they played at like a like a like a, a nightclub or something, and then we never heard it ever. Like it never got released. And then obviously there was a song that.